most about WordPress is that it is completely open source and easy to use. <laughs> that got him started with it, and it is what keeps him using WordPress. So please give it up for Adam Walker. I think we might need to redesignate this the hat room. That was a really good introduction by a fantastic hat, so thank you for that. Uh, so I've got a couple of goals for this talk. Um, one is hopefully to, to be an inspiration for each of you to use your professional skills for the good of your local community. Uh, two is uh, hopefully for us to have some good conversation and dialogue, so I'll try to leave a lot of time for questions and answers because I always get a lot of questions related to what I do. And three, uh, just to be completely honest, is I'd love for you to sign up to be a volunteer at our London event um, because we need WordPress people that are passionate about WordPress and their community because the way that we build 48 websites in 48 hours is through WordPress. So I'm um, a big fan. I've been using WordPress since, I believe, 2004. I've uh, done a lot of custom development on it. I have a team that does a lot of custom development on it. And, uh, and I still keep a regular blog at one of the many links that you see on the screen there. So uh, you're welcome to connect with me any one of the million ways that I've given you, which is probably too many. My apologies there. Uh, but I'd love to connect. And I'm going to be here all weekend and, and would love to, to continue to, to connect with the, the London WordPress community. So... What is 48 in 48? Uh, it's an event where marketing professionals get together to use their professional skills to build 48 websites for 48 charities in 48 hours. Um, the goal of the event is really just that we want marketers, we want professionals to be able to use their skills for good. You know, a lot of times when we think about going to, and I think this kind of goes into my next thing here. There we go. Uh, a lot of times when we think about giving back or we think about volunteering for a charity we think about doing things like passing out food or or you know building things or giving away clothes at a shelter or different things like that and those are all important and those are all good and I've, I've done a lot of those things in my life but i find that when i'm able to give back using my professional skills i'm able to have a wider and deeper impact on the organizations than i otherwise would because my time when i'm ladling soup at a soup kitchen has a different value than my time when I'm giving not when I'm giving marketing expertise or consulting, right? And so the way I build my time is I'm a lot more expensive if I'm giving consulting. And so when I give that away to a charity, it's my way of impacting them in a much greater way because my time is more valuable in that sort of scenario. So we did this because the the, the impetus behind this movement, my co-founder was a founder of an agency. He ran actually two agencies that he grew and then sold. And he found that a lot of times the people in his organizations wanted to give back. They wanted to be involved in the community, but they did not know how. And they didn't have a way to give back using their professional skills. And so he started thinking, well, what's, you know, we're a marketing agency. How can I use my team's professional skills to give back to this community? What's the most basic marketing thing that a charity needs in order to grow and thrive and, and just really do good work. And the most basic thing is a website. And so he started asking the question, okay, well, if we're gonna build a website, let's, let's do it over a weekend, let's do a hackathon type event. We're gonna build a website. How many websites can we build in one weekend? And he started asking me, you know, we're, we're dialoguing about this. And what I found out later is this was actually a setup. He already knew what, how many he wanted to build at the end of the conversation, but he's smart and he's a good salesman. And so he said, Adam, you know, how many sites can we build in a weekend? Can we build five sites? And sure, we can build five sites in a weekend. Well, how about 10? Okay, sure, we can build 10. Well, how about, how about 30? Can we build 30 websites in a weekend? And I'm, okay, yeah, I could, I could probably figure out how to do that. And it's okay, can we build 50 websites in a weekend? And, you know, I, I hesitate a little bit and say, okay, I think we can build 50 websites and we can say, okay, I'll make it easy on you. We'll do, just do 48 in 48 hours uh, to, to make the marketing work, right? And so that's what we did. We, in 2015, we launched with one event in Atlanta to build 48 websites for 48 charities in 48 hours. And I had no idea how we would do it, and I lost a lot of sleep for several months and would have nightmares <laughs> about the event. And then we pulled it off, and it was really amazing. And, um, and then the next year, everybody was so excited about it, we wanted to do it again. So, so we did it again, and then we made it our goal to continue to expand. And so we started in 2015 with one event. This year, uh, 2018, we'll do six events. Uh, one of those is going to be here in London in the fall, uh, and the others are in the U.S. So we're trying to expand internationally. And honestly, we did this because we wanted to do something big. Uh, I find that if you're going to set a goal, why not set the biggest goal you can possibly think of 
and then run really, really hard after it. And uh, so our, our big goal for 48 and 48 is that by 2025, we would like to have 48 events in 48 cities worldwide. So uh, we're in 2018 right now with six events. I'm hoping with the help of some great WordPress people, we can get to 48 events worldwide. So uh, this is always the question everybody wants to know. How did you build 48 websites uh, in 48 hours? So I started off with the idea that we would do this all custom because that's what my agency has traditionally done. We've done all custom websites. And so I, I thought, okay, we'll do custom builds. That was a terrible, terrible, terrible idea because custom builds aren't sustainable long term. Uh, you can't validate code fast enough. You know, a nonprofit or our charity can't sustain a custom built website for a long period of time without having a lot of support and that support costs money. And so instead of doing that, we sort of moved towards a more templated model. So the first year we used Genesis themes and we built everything on Genesis themes and we scaled that way and it was great. Um, and then later on, I'll get into this in a minute, but we use Beaver Builder now, uh, which I'm a huge fan of and would advocate very much for. So, uh, but, but first, the preparation. So how do we build in 48 hours? First, it takes a lot of preparation from the charities. So we run the charities through three courses of work so that they're ready for the event. The first course of work we go through, they do things like setting up a Cloudflare account so that we can then integrate with Cloudflare later on on the back end and actually push the sites live at the end of the event with one click. Uh, we also walk them through, you know, how, to, how do you find where your domain is registered and, and all those sorts of fun things that charities have absolutely no idea about. Um, some of you are smiling, so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we also run them through coursework like trying to understand what their branding is. We take them through a detailed branding questionnaire, understanding who they are, what they are, what they're about, how they're trying to reach their community, what their mission and what their goals are. And we ask some silly questions like, you know, if your charity was a celebrity, who would that celebrity be and why? You know, just trying to really understand the personality of the charity. And then we also run them through coursework around the website. So why do you have a website? Who's the target for your website? What are you trying to do with a website? What are the major features that you must have in the website in order for this to be successful? And we really want to really understand that. And that all translates into a document brief that the teams get at the beginning of the event. So they can then walk through and really understand what they're doing, what they're building, why they're building it, and really connect with the charity to do the best work for them. So the process, the weekend of, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we don't, you know, volunteers sort of show up without knowing much of anything on Friday. They do a very, very quick, very focused discovery time with their charities. Uh, and, and this is not with the charities collaborating. It's, it's focusing on the documents the charities have created. And then they do a call to find out how the charity, like to ask clarifying questions. You know, what's this mean? How do I do this? Why, when you say this, you mean this, that sort of thing. And then they build. Uh, they just roll. So by the end of the first night, typically we have a homepage built um, for almost all of the charities. And then uh, usually the next day is feature builds and subpage builds. And then Sunday is quality assurance testing, all the wrap up you can think of, all the major stuff. And uh, Sunday night, the sites actually do go live at the event. So um, it's pretty exciting. Uh, the technology around this, everybody always wants to know about that too. So we have uh, had built a WordPress multi-tenancy setup. So we, we did not do multi-site. Instead, we want to do WordPress multi-tenancy so that they're all individual WordPress installs with individual databases. And we can spin up those databases off of one core instance that we refer to as Methuselah, because why not? Um, and uh, so Methuselah has a, a core set of plugins and really one theme, which is the Beaver Builder theme and all of the things that we need to make the sites work. And then we literally instantly spin up all 48 sites uh, all at once. And then we're able to deploy all of those at once too through the setup and, and through the system. If you want to get in any more into the technology, I'll give you who you can tweet at. Uh, I'm not the technology guy for the team, uh, but I can talk the talk a little bit. So I'll, I'll answer any questions that I possibly can. Um, and then caffeine, there's a lot of caffeine. So everybody wonders, you know, at a 48 hour event, are you really there for 48 hours? And the answer is no. Everybody has to sleep, myself included. Uh, I learned a long time ago that going for 48 hours straight is a really bad idea. And so, uh, so everybody goes home and sleeps and, and gets good rest and comes back the next day refreshed and ready to go. But really the event, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's really a lot of fun. It's a lot, it's honestly a lot like a word camp. There's a lot of community around it, a lot of collaboration, a lot of people helping out one another. And, and it's really uh, becoming a thing where people look forward to it every year to, to see friends and, and meet new people and really make, make new friends. So it's, uh, it's been great. So 
and my slides have stopped working. Oh, there we go. Okay. So seven takeaways after, or, 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 sorry, the main takeaways after seven events. So we've done seven events now, which means we built, I can't do the math in my head, but I'm going to say like 350-ish sites. Somebody that's better at math can tell me if I'm right later. Don't tell me now. And um, the first thing is always, you know, content is just a beast. Uh, I think anybody that's ever built a website knows that content is probably the worst part of the entire process. And I, so I also run a digital marketing agency and it's true there too. When we're working with larger clients, they don't want to give us content and the charities also don't want to give us content. And so we try to coach them through that process as best we can. We also try to let them know that, you know, content's nothing to be scared of. You can do this. It's okay. Uh, just carve out a little time. And we try to, we try to frame it like that. Just, just carve out time, write some content. It's going to be all right. Do the best you can. And then we'll move forward from there. The next lesson is uh, set expectations early and often. So I'm finding that when you're dealing with people, there's a lot of misunderstanding. Isn't that surprising? I know everybody's shocked by that. That's ever been in any kind of relationship that there's misunderstanding. Uh, but there's a lot that goes into really setting expectations. And so we try to set expectations on the website when a charity signs up. Uh, I actually recently recorded an entire five minute long video that walks through a whole analogy about what our event is like, comparing it to a tiny house, which is a house built on a tiny trailer, which is like a thing in the US. I don't think that's probably a thing here. It's, it's a little ridiculous, but you should look it up. They're entertaining. Um, and, but I, but I, I wanted a whole video to really explain the process in a non-technical way. And that was a way that I could do that. We also send out a whole lot of emails. We reset expectations over and over again. We train our project managers to know and understand what the expectations are and to com communicate those to the charities so that they know upfront uh, what's expected of them. Because yes, this is a free website, but there's also a lot of work involved from them because they're gonna have to write content and all that sort of thing. And, and we try to make sure they understand that yes, this is also a free website, but at some point you pay for websites, whether you pay uh, hosting or whatever, like they cost money in the long, it's like a kit, you know, like you can have a kit, they cost a lot of money. I have five of them, I know. like. They cost a lot of money. Um, and websites tend to cost money too. Not as much as kids, of course, uh, but they do cost money. Uh, the next is plan, execute, learn, and iterate. And so, you know, when we did our first event in 2015, I had a really good plan that didn't go very well. So we, we executed the plan and then we, we figured out what was wrong with the plan. We learned from it and we iterated. And the next year we, we did better. We, we improved some things. And there were other things that were wrong and the next year, the same thing. And, and so every event, literally every event, there's something that goes wrong that I look back at and go, hmm, I, I should have seen that. I missed it. Uh, how can I learn from that and do better next time? And so every event's better than the last one and, and it continues to get better and better and better. And the last is, uh, is that WordPress is an amazing platform for giving back. I mean, the reason that we use WordPress, the reason I've used WordPress since 2004 is it's open source, it's free, it's easy to use, it's easy to maintain. I mean, after our event, a charity can take their WordPress install and do anything they want with it. I mean, they can download the whole thing. They can move to any hosting company. They can, I mean, just the sky's the limit, whatever they want to do with it. As long as they don't ask me to do anything with it, we're all set. So um, I, I really love WordPress. I love the community around WordPress. Uh, I love how community minded the WordPress community is. And that's one of the reasons that we've been able to focus and, and, and grow uh, as we've done this. So uh, again, back to my goals. Uh, how you can get involved this is a little bit of a pitch, but I'm, I'm not benefiting from it. The charities are benefiting from it. So uh, we are coming to London in the fall. Uh, we would love to have the WordPress community support the event. We're very excited about the event. I just talked with uh, IBM yesterday about hosting the event in the, the Waterloo area uh, right on the river. It's a really nice spot. They have a really great and creative space that I think we're going to be able to use for the event. And uh, I've had a lot of other good meetings about it. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. And uh, I'll, I'll be back so you can see the hat. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun working together. Um, and there's where you can sign up also. Again, just trying to promote the event a little bit there, but uh, not too heavy handed about it. Uh, all right, what questions do you have? Because everybody always has a million questions about, about what we're doing. So who's got a question? We have yeah. a question right here. So, um, Jessica, thank you. And then you go first. <laughs> Hi. Um, Speech. Uh, uh, I did uh, something similar in Marbet like uh, three, two or three months ago. Okay. Uh, WordPresshacker.org or something like that. Sure. With the Spanish WordPress community. 
Um, we had a few problems. The problem we had was uh, to get the charities if we all got, got four. That's the biggest five. problem we have, getting the charities to sign up. By yes. mile, that's the biggest problem we have. I, I, I spend money getting charities to sign up for a free website. Okay. Then also it was not easy to get the people to do the job. Mm -hmm. We were finally, no, I think we did finally three websites. Right. Um, just one with real content. Right. Not, uh, not uh, this demo content. Right. And that was because the, they wouldn't the write content it. problem. Uh -huh. I spent almost a half of time trying to explain what content means. Uh -huh. Which was not that easy. We have training courses that help with that. Yeah, uh, right. I yeah. think it, it would be good to train and send it, uh, the charities organization all information weeks before. Yes. So they can have um, clear paths what right. they need to have for the for the event. Right. Yeah. And uh, also that was. Yeah, we so we start the training uh, months before, ideally, um, and, yeah. and help them through that process. And and I should mention that um, getting charities is by far the hardest thing we do. We actually need 80 charities to sign up in order to get 50 through the coursework because 30 are going to just wash out during the process. We try to have 50 ready for the event in case that two wash out during the event, which can happen for various reasons. And so, um, so if, if anybody knows a charity in the UK that would like a free website, you can save me some money and you can help them sign up because I, I actively pay a salesperson and, uh, and pay for like Facebook paid ads to get people to sign up to get a free website, which is surprising. But nonetheless, that's, that's what we have to do. Yeah. We want to help so badly that we will spend money to do it. So. <laughs> Hi, uh, thanks for the talk, it's really quite inspiring. Um, I've volunteered for a non-profit and I know uh, a few non-profits who run Fantastic. Business, so I'll let you know. Uh, but also, I'd like to know, what happens afterwards? You've given them this website and now yep. the clients at our agency, you have a website and they're like, oh, it's done. Yes. Uh, not done for us. So yeah. how, how do you uh, encourage right. them to use it and just doing training and what do you do about hosting and any support? Those are really good questions, I'm glad you asked. So uh, the first thing you should know is we typically will host a mini conference during the event itself for the charities where they can come in and learn the basics about how do you use your website? What do you need to be thinking about as you're posting for social media? So we'll do kind of some general digital marketing training for the charities during the event, and event itself so that they can also meet the teams, but then leave the teams alone to get some work done and get some training over here. Um, so after the event, we've got 30 days of free hosting and maintenance and what I would refer to as very limited support. So it's email answers, that's it. Uh, after those 30 days, they can stay on our platform and pay for that. I prefer that they don't. And so we've got free, uh, a year of free hosting from GoDaddy uh, for them, like ready to go. And we've set up um, a partnership with a company that will migrate their site to GoDaddy for them for $100 US that I, I, we have no affiliation with that company at all. That's just the cheapest I could find. And so we make it really easy for them to move off the platform and go anywhere they want because I don't want them tied to us in any way. It's probably more headache for me if they are. So I'd, I'm happy to see them uh, take their site and fly away as, as, they, as, they, as, as it were. So, uh, and if they want ongoing support, obviously we would encourage them to, to reach out to the community that built it and see if there's other people there that might want to help them. Um, typically, some, some volunteers will remain engaged after the event. We do not ask for them to do that. We tell the charities that the volunteers will not remain engaged after the event, um, but some do from time to time, and that can be helpful too. Does that answer all your questions? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yes? Over here. Over here. Thanks. Um, yeah, first a question about the teams um, that you put together. So the teams are volunteers, but do you have a representative of the charity they're working with as part of that team? Not during the event. So they, the, the charity, the team has access to the event, uh, sorry, the team has access to the charity by phone call on Friday night to ask clarifying questions. They have a short meeting greet on Saturday. Other than that, we keep the charities as far away as possible or the work will never get done. They'll be looking over their shoulder the whole time. Well, that was yeah. like the, the other part of my question. How do you then deal with... Uh, 
as probably most of us know, uh, the client who doesn't particularly like the way something looks or yep. feels, and they've got big opinions yep. rather than it shouldn't work that way. How do you deal with that? So one of the expectations we set early and often is that this is not client work. This is a gift and you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit like I tell my kids. Um, and we just sort of say that nicely, like th th this is a gift to you. It's going to go live. If you want to take it down the next day, you can do that. But this is how this works. And if you're signing up for this process, this is what we're going to go through. And it's going to be done by professionals. So, you know, it's going to look good. If there's a difference of opinion, they can do whatever they want after the event. Okay. So we, we, try to, we try to set, there's still some that are grumpy. Uh, and we do the best that we can to accommodate that. Okay. Yeah. And as far as the teams go, I should mention, uh, we have teams that come from agencies of all sizes. They'll send teams of two, three, ten uh, to, the, to the event, uh, which is kind of fun because the team can kind of merge and gel together and really build some camaraderie uh, during the event. Uh, also, large companies like IBM will send a team. I think we're going to have 20 IBM employees at our event in two weeks. Uh, for example, UPS will send teams, people like that. And then a lot of freelancers also come together and they will join either existing teams or they'll create an ad hoc team together uh, and, and have a lot of fun. And then finally, I'll commit to sending teams to my company based on you having a hat like that. <laughs> I'll borrow her hat for the event just for you. Is that, <laughs> can we work that out? <laughs> we can. <laughs> okay. I know we're just like that. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, I'm working for a charity. Uh -huh. Okay, we're talking from time to time we've been size for this certain event. Yep. So we might join on basic of that, opinion of site just for one event, not the main sure. online website, which I don't think we're gonna sure. because that's a lot of work on it. And I also also you uh, how do we pull that off? And also you got a volunteer already for the event. Right, yeah. I mean we'll we'll build microsites for charities, absolutely. And that's, uh, that's a lot easier and faster than building a full website for, for a bigger charity. So yeah, microsites are great. Thanks for asking that, that's good. Hi there. Um, what kind of complexity are these sites? Not very. Uh, so, so we do, um, in order to maintain the integrity of the sites, our platform is a closed platform. Uh, so it's, it's WordPress, it's about 30 plugins in the Beaver Builder theme, but we don't add any additional plugins because every plugin on there has been very, very, vetted by our team. And so um, those 30 plugins, you can do a lot of stuff. I mean, we've got a calendar plugin, we've got, you can do events, you can do donations, limited donations, depending. So there's a lot of functionality there, but it does what it does and that's it. And so we tell the charities up front, like this is a, it's a marketing website, it's not a high-end functionality website. You can do, you know, a simple members area, but we're not getting into like member management and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so is that like a call kind of understanding of Yes. Yeah, and we, we try to, again, we try to set that expectation early with the charities, yeah. and then several more times. There were two questions in the back and one in the front. On your to right your right. Side. On your right side, Jesse. Okay, right, there you go. Hello there. We've talked a lot about teams. Are there any other roles um, yes. that you would require? I'm very keen to help have one or a developer on board the market as much as I Yes. Uh, so, so interestingly, um, we need a lot of marketers on the teams, uh, in particular because we are using a page builder rather than actually coding. Um, but there's, there's roles for, we need organizers, similar to WordCamp organizers. Uh, we have a, a good team started, but if you're interested, we'd love for you to sign up and consider that. Uh, we also need people to, to set up and tear down and help out and you know, get coffee and I mean, just all the kind of random stuff that happens during the event. Uh, we also have typically support desk people. So like we'll have several WordPress people at each event that are sort of WordPress specialists that just sort of sit out in a lobby and the teams come to, because a lot of the teams say from agencies and agency may not use WordPress, but they may want to be involved in, in the event or IBM, for example, probably hasn't used Beaver Builder a lot, but they're going to have a great team there. And so we have a WordPress person that can help coach them through that process of, oh, you're trying to do that with Beaver Builder. We're here, you just do this, this, and this, and then they go from there. So we try to have um, two to five really WordPress specialists at every event, if at all possible. So yeah. Sign up, Mark, check all the check boxes that apply. <laughs> Hello. Um, of the clients that you work with and, and the charity websites, um, how many of those do you find after they've been launched and after they've been released? Obviously, there's a job to maintain the content. Now, do you typically find that, what, 50% want you to maintain the content and 50% manage it themselves? Or do you find that, what is the percentage that you find 
uh, we can't maintain any of the content. So they, we, and we train them to do that. Now, how many of them actually are updating their site on a regular basis? I, I couldn't tell you, but I can tell you that uh, our goal for this year is that 42 of the 48 websites at every single event go live. Um, because our first year was significantly less than that. We want to make sure we're building sites that go live. The other six out of the 48 will go live, but they're just always extenuating circumstances like, hey, we have an event next week that we're raising funds for. We can't have a new site launch for right now, for example. Um, but we do train them on how to use the website. We also have training videos. I think it's uh, WP 101 or something that's installed on the back end of the website for them. And it's got, I don't know, 70 training videos on how to do anything imaginable. And so they've got a lot of training and support for, for them to maintain the website. Awesome. Thank you. There was one question here in the front row. Uh, it, it was kind of an answer to the same question. Similar question was the makeup of the teams. And oh, right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, well, so I, I, I can go into a little bit more detail. So. Typically, a team will have a project manager, a graphics or UX person, um, often some type of front end person, though that's, you know, it's helpful but not always required. Uh, often a content person, again, helpful but not required. Um, a WordPress sort of specialist. I mean, the teams, the ideal team would have those five roles, but I mean, some teams have two people that just know WordPress and, know, and understand digital marketing and they can crank out two websites in a weekend, and that's, that's fine. I've been on those teams. Uh, I've, I've you know, supplemented in New York where we had one guy and he ended up being the only one that showed up from the team that he signed up with. And I was like, okay, let's build a site. And so we built two sites together and it was great. So it can, it can vary quite a bit. But there's a lot of peripheral support uh, from the rest of the community at the event to help with whatever's lacking on the team. So typically there are uh, 20 to 25 teams at the event. And so each team will end up building more than one site. Some will build two. Uh, some will build four, depends on the size and scale of the team and well and how many we have. <laughs> it's one back there, I think. Oh um, I think that um there was somebody first in the last row. <laughs> oh gotcha. That's great. Trying to get the queue. Like. Of course, of course. You manage it, I'll I'll be quiet. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was wondering if you are a content developer and you would like to contribute, but you would not find the time to join in person. Is it possible to contribute remotely? Yes. And how would that work? Yeah, so we do, we do have remote volunteers. Um, you can volunteer for the, during the weekend of the event. As a remote volunteer, when you sign up, just, just note that in your sign up. Um, additionally, we have a, after every event, we have a post event volunteer team that is, exists just to fix issues. And so front end people are really great for that in particular. So, you know, there's always, I mean, we're building 48 sites in 48 hours. There's going to be bugs, right? And so we take those bug reports, we put them all on a Trello board, and then we have a team that goes through and just knocks out each of those issues after the event. So yeah, we'd love to have some remote volunteers. Yeah, thanks for asking. I need to make sure that's in my presentation next time. Um, you, you mentioned um, um, relating to the charities, the um, pre-event workshops that you run. Um, do you do something similar for, for the teams or does everyone just turn up from the day? We're working on that. Um, to date, we haven't done a lot of that. We have done some training videos for the teams in terms of how to get started. Um, but we've not done any actual coursework. I'm, I'm, I've been kind of toying with that, trying to figure out if volunteers would actually be willing to go through any courses or not. I think maybe watching a few videos might be easier than going through actual courses. So, but I'm, I'm thinking there might be some by the time the London event rolls around. Seems likely. It's a really good question. Yeah, you're using the builder. I was just wondering how much of the design you're doing from scratch and how much you're building up templates to use in the future. So typically, so we're using Beaver Builder and we're also using an additional add-on, which I believe it's called like Beaver Builder Ultimate, I forget. So Beaver Builder has its own sort of starting uh, layouts and then Beaver Builder Ultimate, I forget the name of it, uh, but it also has starting layouts. So we've got between the two of them, probably 50 different layouts to start with. And so what we do is we encourage teams to begin there with one that fits the needs of the charity and then highly customize those after that. Some teams will start from scratch because they're more confident and they really kind of understand Beaver Builder and how it works. Um, but I find that the most effective teams will start from some existing layout and then highly customize it from there. 
Hi, um, it's Ross who's spoken. Uh, hey, Ross! I'll come and have a great chat. Um, where are you, uh, if anywhere, with looking into UK specific uh, charity issues like GDPR and Gift Aid? Uh, I'm, I'm going to all the GDPR sessions here <laughs> first. Um, I'm also, uh, I, I'm trying to dialogue with several agencies that have a lot more experience in this area to be sure that we're covering all of our bases there. It's very important to me to make sure that, that all, all of the legal uh, standards are met and, all, and really all just the standards are met uh, for that. So uh, if anybody's an expert in any of those fields, uh, I would love to chat with you. That would be helpful. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to the sessions. I'm talking to more agencies. Uh, I've even had, uh, had some conversations with a law firm here in the UK just to be sure that we're, we're following all the guidelines. Great. Yeah. Hi, uh, I just wanted to clarify what your definition of charity is, because um, in the UK we have um, a legal status for charity, but we also have uh, public schools and religious associations and uh, yep. community associations. <laughs> right. Um, do you entertain them as well, or do they have to have the legal charities? Things? Typically, just the legal charities. Um, we so the criteria for the charity is, is very broad. Um, it's essentially uh, a legal charity first, um, generally non-religious, non-political, so that we're not hitting any extremes there, can't, and can't be on the extreme fringe of any sort of hot button issue. Uh, the example I love to give, which you'd probably appreciate, is uh, in America, you know, guns are a big thing, so we probably would not do a website for a charity that's advocating every human owned automatic weapons. Like, that's not, it's not legal or it's not political or religious, but that's probably a little too far, right? So we're not going to do that. Um, otherwise, it just has to be small. So under $3 million budget, uh, we'd like for them to have a staff person of some sort, however part time they may be, um, and that's pretty much it. So we really want a big spectrum of as many charities as we can find. I think schools will also be a little too complex is the other, the, the other hard part about schools. I've, I've done some school websites with my company, and there, there's a lot going on there. It's a very interactive session. I love that. That's I, why I left a lot of time for the Q&A. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bit surprised. Like, okay, the presentation is already over, but it's awesome to see yeah. how the audience is yeah. interacting with you. But I would also like to um, ask a question. Great. So um, did this project... Um, influence the way you are looking at volunteerism or, and, and how if you have? Yeah, I think it's helped me to, to, it's helped me to recognize that people tend to specialize and when we can engage people to volunteer in what is their specialty, there's a lot more value in it. And, that, and that's not to say it's not valuable to, to you know, ladle soup at a soup kitchen. There's a, a lot of value in that. And honestly, I would argue there's maybe more value to me personally if I do that because of how it impacts me as a, as a person. Um, but the, but the, the, the do, there's a dollar value that's, that's exponentially greater when I give my professional services away. And so, um, so, I'm trying to, so I'm trying to not just advocate that with 40 and 40, but in all areas, like where are we professionals that we can give away our services to help more people in need? I totally agree. Yeah. That's awesome. Any more questions from the audience? We still have a little time left if you want to. Last chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always oh, find me with the hat. Yeah, so, last yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, how has this impacted your uh, company? I'm not saying it's still running. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I run a digital agency and the charity at the same time, which is entertaining. Um, it's helped us to gain some credibility. Uh, we're a very small agency. We started very small. I never worked in a large agency before. And so now I'm able to interact with more large agencies in a more credible way because, you know, I mean, I, I get it. If I was a large agency, I'd look at my tiny little agency, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. But because I've, I've done all this and I've interacted with larger agencies, it's just given us a little more credibility to be able to work with them and do other projects. Um, so it's a, it's a very indirect um, impact, but it's been, it's been a good impact, a positive one. Yeah. And I'll be around all weekend, so, and I've always got the hat. So uh, if you want to find me, please do. Yeah. One last question from Tom. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great tool. And I think we've chatted to you about how we can support our pregnancy with the consent. Yep. And also, but um, on a personal level, you talked about what happens after the event, uh, the, 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 the websites, but what happens after the after the event? Are you completely wiped out after the weekend? Yes. I'm, I'm, so I've learned this. Uh, at every event I go to now, I try to leave 
way before everybody else to get real sleep because I can't, I'm too old to do this. <laughs> I, can't, I can't keep up with, with all the younger people. And I got five kids. I got to keep my energy levels high. So, so I tend to go back and sleep reasonable hours at the hotel. I've got a younger staff that sort of stays and makes sure everything's good. And after the event, I'm completely spent. But uh, in the next two weeks, uh, let's see, in the next three weeks, we have two events. So I've got to really conserve my energy carefully because uh, it's going to be intense. So this has been great. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you for giving this very interesting and inspiring talk. So please, one last, a big applause for Adam Walker. <laughs> GDPR, so 